Hi, last night I started looking on YouTube for some videos about uh, leaving Bangkok for an international flight, flying out of Suvarnabhumi International Airport, and I couldn't find any. I just wanted to know if there are any details that I need to know about. Flying in COVID times often presents unexpected problems. So I thought I would make this video because I'm flying out of here in uh, three more days. And uh, I, I thought I would put the process of, uh, of what's required just, just to get out of here, uh, just to get on an airplane and fly out. And one of the first things you need to do is this. Med Consult, which I found online. It was also recommended by a friend of mine. Yeah, you, you have to get a COVID test to, uh, to board an airplane. I fly Korean Air. Korean Air accepts either the antigen test or the PCR test. I don't know what either one of them really mean, but uh, apparently Korean Air is happy with either one if you get a negative result. And uh, so I went looking for a place to get that done. And I, this place was recommended to me, Med Consultants. It's in this kind of interesting looking building right here. Let's walk a little bit back so you can get a perspective on it. It's a very distinctive building. And what I found really kind of cool about it is it has parking. Now I know expats, not all expats have a car, but I do. And uh, finding a place to put it in Bangkok is often a pain in the ass. So I was really grateful to discover that they have a parking garage attached to the damn building. So yeah, med consultants, it's in this building. I'm shooting this part of the video after I've already received the test and I was really impressed with the operation that Dr. Donna put together here. And this is uh, Dr. Donna Robinson. Donna Hi, Robinson. Yeah, I'm socially distancing, so I don't have my mask. Uh, um, hi there. So we do uh, COVID tests every morning. Uh -huh. Everybody who comes here is flying or traveling. So we're keeping you safe and guaranteed you're going to get the result tonight. Uh -huh. We've got two people working 24 seven. They will get you your result. Well, what I'm impressed with is, is not only are you a physician, which is an accomplishment in and of itself, but you're clearly a, a very, uh, very good businesswoman. We're and learning every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've had a small business. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much, doctor. Great. And, Thanks uh, for coming. Uh, she's a pretty impressive woman. Uh, physician, business person. She's. Uh, uh, provided a service that's needed and it's efficient, reasonably priced at 2,000 baht, which is about $60. And uh, you get the test done guaranteed to get results within four hours, which is important when you have a 72 hour window to get this test done. That's what the airline requires that you have a negative COVID test within a 72 hour window of departure. Um, so yeah. That's the place behind me, easy to find. I'll link it in the description. So yeah, before you get on an airplane, you gotta get this done as well. Well, not really, but getting a haircut in New York costs three times as much. And I love to put my cute haircut on my videos as well. So tomorrow I'm off for three months. I'm gonna miss this crowd of cuties. This is Kelly, my favorite. She got all dressed up for a photo shoot that we're having. We're having a little fun tonight. Did a photo shoot. <laughs> and we're going to have a little ice cream cake. I'm going to miss you. She's my favorite. And uh, this here's Ying, the tough teenager. So what the got Ying. Thank you. He's a good student. And of course, this is my honey boa cow. Let's give Boo a camera. I know, I know, camera kiss. That's my honey. And this is Sister Nompea, the sexy sister. <laughs> so yeah, we're uh, off, to, uh, off to New York in the morning. I'm gonna miss this crowd. Uh, I've become quite fond of them and I think it's a reciprocal arrangement. I'll be gone for three months. We're gonna miss each other, but I'll be back. This is my home now. So yeah, off we go. I'm packed and ready to go. I'm about to leave. 
And what I wanted to talk about a little bit in this video was uh, precautions for uh, preventing yourself from getting a disease as you go through airports. Now, a few weeks ago when I was thinking about all of this, I had read some data on airport safety regarding COVID transmission, and there is a lot of good data out there showing that transmission of, of the disease is not a big problem on airplanes. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's, it's minimal. It's limited because the airlines, for the most part, have taken steps to protect themselves and their customers. And then I realized I was overlooking the airports. In those international airports, what do we have to do? We have to get on that big, long in immigration queue. You have to clear immigrant. You have to go up to the counter, or at least I do. I have to go up to the counter uh, uh, for the ticket clerk. Then you have to pass through security. Then you go through the immigration queue, which from a biohazard perspective is a gigantic clusterfuck. There are people from all over the region and the world converging on these, on these rooms full of strangers and they pass through checkpoints. And that's when I realized that the, uh, the, the point of most concern for passing on a biohazard are these checkpoints. You have individuals, you have clerks and security people and immigration officers who are taking your passport from you, examining it, stamping it, giving you the tickets and handing it back to you. And they're doing that to everybody in the room. So, you know, they're handling hundreds, perhaps thousands of these documents a day. And that's where a lot of this biohazard is spread on surfaces. You know, if the virus exists on a person's hands or on the plastic gloves that they are wearing, they're going to put it on your passport or your ticket or that. And I, and I realized that's something that is easily avoided. So the biggest precaution that I could take are these things. Put them on in a, you know, in a safe environment that, that you don't suspect any of the disease is present. And then put your passport in a plastic bag. So that I'll go up and they'll say, can I have your passport? I'll hand them the passport. They'll be gloved as well, right? They'll examine it, they'll do whatever they, they're going to do with it. And I'm going to put it right back into this thing and seal it until I get to the next checkpoint. I have three checkpoints to do that with. Uh, at Suvinaboom Airport, at which point I'm going to wipe it down. Now, I couldn't find alcohol wipes, but what I did find was a uh, alcohol spray and a tissue. Same thing, just spray, spray, wipe, wipe. And a doctor showed me this, and this is simple. So I'm touching all of this stuff. When I'm past all the checkpoints, I'll clean my passport up and, you know, put it back in a, in a clean plastic bag and seal it. Now, what do you do with these things? These things are now contaminated. And as a way to remove them, you don't touch the inside. You, you remove one like this and just pull it off your hand. Now, the hand is clean because it's been in the glove and you stick it underneath the other glove and make a bag out of the whole mess without ever touching the outside of the glove and then you discard it appropriately. So this is a rather meaningful time for me I've been here in this space is a, a, a yoga, was a yoga studio for me. Uh, it was a yoga studio where I could uh, accommodate up to 18 students over here in the L-shaped part of it. And that's why I have all these mirrors. And uh, a year and a half ago, when this whole COVID mess uh, started to unfold, I uh, turned it into a bedroom where I have uh, sequestered myself when necessary. And uh, my life changed a lot. You know, I became closer to uh, Buakau, my, my girlfriend and her family, who were more like employees back then. And now, you know, I'm kind of the head of the household. I'm, I've become a family man at this point in my life. It's not something I anticipated or asked for, but when it happened, I'm kind of loving it. It's, 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 uh, it's working well for me. And, you know, the past year and a half has been challenging in some regards, but rewarding in others. I mean, to, you know, I had to close the yoga studio down. So I, uh, I took up vi videography 
and still photography, which I'm enjoying very much. I'm enjoying both, but particularly the still photography. So what I intend to do is when I get back here in October, this bed is going back upstairs on the fourth floor where it used to be in my bedroom on the fourth floor. And I'm turning this space into a photography studio. Um, there's a nice light that comes through this window over here during the early part of the day that is, is helpful. I'm gonna to have to take down some of these mirrors, but uh, some will stay up because I'm going to keep uh, this part as a, as a yoga studio. And uh, I don't know, I guess I'm rambling on here because I'm feeling very nostalgic about the last year. It's been quite a year for me, a year and a half, uh, as it has been for many people. And now all of a sudden I'm off to the United States. It seems, uh, like a big deal. I mean, I, I, I was a traveling kind of guy. You know, I, I traveled all over Southeast Asia frequently and to the United States at least twice a year for the past 11 years, up until a year and a half ago. And now I've been in this room more often than anything else. And off I go. I mean, I'm on my way to the airport right now as we speak. And uh, it's... Uh, kind of an emotional moment for me, I suppose. Uh, certainly the mood here in the household is much different than it was last night when we were snapping pictures and having ice cream and uh, having a good old time. Oh, there's one person we didn't capture yesterday was uh, P. King. Bye-bye, P. King. <laughs> Hope you're okay. And uh, Ying, see you. Be good, take care of Ma. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, I can call the cab. And off we go. Well, I just got dropped off at the curb here at the airport, which is so very less crowded than what I'm used to. I guess that's not surprising. And uh, I wasn't even going to film the airport because they're uninteresting. And it's been done to death. But I thought... If there are any unusual circumstances, I do want to catch it on the video. That is, after all, the purpose of the, of the video. So, uh, off we go into Suvanabum Airport.